I have been so focused on Ningguang from Genshin Impact, which is my most recent figure review, that I totally forgot about her right here, which I had already purchased last month, more than a month ago. How dare you! This is such an embarrassment for a self-proclaimed Fit Grand Order fan. Hello and welcome back to Excrogane Blog and Photography. Steven right here with a review of a skill figure by Max Factory for today. It has been a really long time since I last purchased any skill figure made by Max Factory. Not because they are bad or anything like that, but rather they were just not making the things I want. But as long as it is FGO stuff, there is always a chance of me buying it. So here we are today with this figure. For today, we have Max Factory's 1x7 skill Archer class servant, Tomoe Gozen from Fate's Grand Order. This is a simple figure by all means, there is nothing too complex or complicated going on with this figure. And for some reason, she is an exclusive. Max Factory has been slapping this exclusive title on most if, if not all of their FGO figures. Elizabeth Battery was an exclusive. Jen Diak, well the one in swimsuit, I think that is an Archer class too. That one is also an exclusive. And among the a few others, yeah, Tomoe Gozen is also an exclusive. I have no idea why they did that. Did it make the figure rare or became more expensive in the aftermarket? No, that did not happen at all. They did maintain their value very well, close to the market, I mean the recommended retail price. But no, those figures did not become very rare or high in value, nothing of that sort happened. So I'm not sure what this exclusive thing is supposed to be. What is the point of it? I'm not very sure. So this figure is about 17, 18,000 Japanese yen or so. I can't even remember the price anymore. That is my bad habit, not double checking the price before reviewing figures. But that is almost the normal price, the average price for skill figure nowadays. And she was released back in June. June 2022. Before we move on to the details of the figure, a quick look at her box. This is what her box looks like. Very nice to be honest. Nothing special, but aesthetically it is very nice. And the colors of the figure as well as the box, it reminds me of Christmas somehow. Christmas trees or Christmas presents. I have no idea why, but the colors remind me of that. Yeah. Okay, so we shall move on to the figure. This figure is mostly good news. So, from the sculpt, head to toe, the face, everything is precise, spot on compared to what you see in official artwork of this character. 10 out of 10 sculpt there. No complaints at all. Usually, it is very hard to find problems with Max Factory skill figures. Yeah. While this may be a simple figure in sculpt, Max Factory actually paid a lot of attention to the details even in the sculpt. For one, you look at her dress. If you paid attention, all these textures on the dress in front behind, they are embossed. There is some texture on it. When you put your fingers on it, you touch it, you feel it. The paint work is clean throughout. There are no scratches, no blemishes. No paint bleeding, everything is very precise. So despite this being a so-called lower cost scale figure, well, when you compare her to those 30,000, 40,000 yen figure, yeah, she is relatively low cost. Max Factory still did a great job with this figure. With the paint department, I can't find anything at all. Look at that floor tile base she gets. That is not something you see very often nowadays. And I really do appreciate that. However, this figure is not 100% problem free or perfect. There are two issues going on with this figure which I want you to know about if you are interested in buying her because honestly, there are very few reasons not to buy this figure if you are a FGO fan. 
So the first one, let's talk about her umbrella. The good things about her umbrella is that the paintwork is impeccable. A lot of details going on. No matter where you look on this figure, the paintwork is pretty much perfect. Not to mention the handle is made of metal. It is die cast. So it is quite durable to some extent. However, the not so good parts about this umbrella is that the connection between the handle and the main body of the umbrella up there is not very tight, not very secure. And as a result, it is very easy to accidentally knock the umbrella off the figure. And if that does happen, you better pray that the umbrella does not land on the floor, on the side, and all these fine structures ending up breaking because of that. That would be very sad. This is one thing you need to be careful about. The second one is that the grip between the handle and the grip in her left hand, not very tight as well. In fact, it is kind of loose and the umbrella is just relying on the shoulder, leaning against her shoulder to stay in place. I would have preferred it to be slightly tighter, but I do understand why Max Factory did it this way, made it loose. There is a reason for that. So, there are actually pros and cons to both the tight approach and the loose approach. If the parts are kind of loose, the good thing is that there is less friction between two different parts with different paint work. So there is less risk of paint transfer over time. But the bad thing about it is that it is not very secure. If the umbrella handle is much tighter in her hand, there is also more friction and over time, that black color paint might be rubbed on her hand and you get this paint transfer. And nobody likes paint transfers. If you live in a hot and humid country like I do, the risk of paint transfer is even higher because the paint literally melts and becomes stained on other parts of the figure. The second problem with this figure is the foot pack. You do get a metal foot pack, but only in the right foot. The left one is plastic. I would have preferred both feet to be metal foot packs. And the connection is very tight, the exact opposite of the umbrella. So as you can see over here, I did not dare to push the figure all the way into the base because I want to take the figure apart later and put her back in her box. I'm not displaying this one for now. So yeah, once you push the figure into the base and you want to take her apart again, be very careful about it. So these are the two things you need to watch out for this figure, the loose umbrella and the tight foot packs. As a conclusion, do I recommend this figure? As I mentioned earlier, there are very few reasons not to buy this figure of Tomoe Go Zen. Very nice. If you're a fan of Fate's Grand Order, yes, get one. She is not too expensive to be honest. And the box is of an average size, so shipping cost should be reasonable. If you do have any additional questions about this figure or any other figure, yes, please drop a comment below and I will help you as best as I can. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you again soon. Goodbye.